Just like heroes, there are some villains out there operating below the radar. Maybe they're from an indie comic, or the C or D list. Either way, it's time to bring some into the spotlight. These are the top 10 villains you've never heard of. Number 10. The Penny Plunderer, aka Joe Coyne. He appeared back in World's Finest number 30 in 1947, and is actually the reason Batman has a giant penny in his Batcave, not Two-Face. After getting caught stealing pennies, Coyne dedicated his life to crimes revolving around pennies. Batman got his giant penny after defeating him, however, this has since been retconned away in current canon. The giant coin does now come from Two-Face, and in another version, Scarecrow slash Two-Face Year One, it comes from both. Though in this version, the giant coin crushes and kills the plunderer. Number 9. Trevor Goodchild from Eon Flux Now some quibble over whether or not Trevor counts, and that depends entirely upon whether or not you consider Eon Flux to be a superhero work. It definitely has superhero properties and a superhero framework, although it's simply within a more stylized sci-fi setting. Trevor Goodchild is head of a rigid controlled society, under Goodchild's seemingly benevolent control. However, Goodchild is repressive and prone to letting his own whims dictate his public policy and practices. And he also went to some extreme lengths to secure power. Trevor is an antagonist who makes you question your protagonist in the style of Lex Luthor, which makes him unique and complicated. The Eon Flux series has 16 episodes, and they're all fascinating. Check them out and explore some intriguing psychological issues. Back to clear camp villains at number 8, Microwave Man. Louis Paget. He appeared in Action Comics number 487 in 1978, a pre-crisis villain who likely isn't reappearing anytime soon. He was a scientist who gave himself powers using microwaves. He is said to be the first supervillain, at least on Earth 1, which is explained through the complicated means of time travel. So basically after being a villain for a while, aliens invited him to explore the galaxy with them, and then brought him back and restored his youth so he could fight Superman because he asked them to, even though he knew that this would kill him. And it does. R.I.P. Microwave Man, you were part of a pointless one-off story. Don't give yourself microwave powers, kids. It's not worth it. Number 7. The Fisherman And why yes, he's an Aquaman villain. He first appeared in that capacity in Aquaman number 21 in 1965. He had had some previous iterations that were a different character but with the same name. So who is he? No one knows. But he uses a high-tech pressure suit to steal rare scientific inventions, and has such amazing gadgets as a collapsible fishing rod. He actually nearly kills Aquaman in their first encounter with an explosive lure. So he seems to have been given to Aquaman as a villain pretty much because of his name, but I still wish he'd spent more time literally fishing for him. That would have been great. However, that definitely wouldn't fly today. Nobody is catching a wild Jason Momoa unless he lets them. Keeping it aquatic themed, well, sort of, at number 6. The Octopus The Octopus is the arch nemesis of Will Eisner's The Spirit. He never shows his true face, instead opting for a myriad of disguises. Just like an octopus? I don't understand. However, he does have distinct gloves, which were used to identify him to readers. It was a huge part of his character, so of course during the film adaptation, we showed Samuel L. Jackson to the audience as much as possible. It's the same approach they used with Dr. Claw in the 1999 Inspector Gadget film. That and making sure he was hot. Always an important trait in a villain you're never supposed to see. Number 5. The Trapster, aka Paste Pot Pete. He was a villain who went up against the Human Torch using his paste-style weapons. While paste would be an effective means against fire, his name was pretty silly. And as a result, it was changed to the Trapster, which some may be more familiar with. This occurred in Fantastic Four number 38. And it's easy to see why. You can't take a name like Paste Pot Pete very seriously, no matter how good their weapons or plans are. Part of villainy is presentation, and your name is a huge part of that. Expert chemistry, good adhesive, it all goes out the window. In fact, it was actually a running gag to remind the Trapster of his first name as the mention of it embarrassed and angered him. Number 4. Sleaze From the infamous issues of Action Comics number 592 and 593. In these issues, he was a villain to Big Barda and Superman. Sleaze hails from Apocalypse, Darkseid's planet, and also the one of Barda's origin. He has the ability to elicit control over people using his empathic abilities, which he uses to turn Barda into a dancing Leia-style slave, and he does the same to Superman, and then sets them up with a porn director to get money by having them make a porn tape together and selling it. He definitely lives up to his name, and this entire plot is really uncomfortable and just gross. Sleaze was sort of around for a while after this, but not overly prominent, and he died during Countdown. And I say, good riddance. Number 3. Snowflame 
powered literally by cocaine. It gave him special abilities. I'm sure a lot of people on cocaine think that it does that. He was the antagonist for the New Guardians, a DC team from a series that debuted in the late 80s and didn't last very long. Snowflame was the head of a Colombian drug cartel. He gained super strength and the ability to cover himself in white fire after snorting cocaine. How did he get his powers? No one knows. Does cocaine do this for anyone else? Probably not. His tagline is also the man powered by cocaine. Number two, Egg Fu, a villain for Wonder Woman who appeared during her mod 60s run in Wonder Woman number 157 in 1965. He was a Chinese communist agent who was also an egg. And why yes, it's just as awkward as you're imagining. And of course he had a yellow peril speech pattern. His mustache, which cause of course he had a giant mustache, could also be used as whips. And he was the size of a house. Egg Fu got a less racist origin post crisis that turned him into a 19th century supercomputer. And then another one again later on that retconned him to being from Apocalypse. He even appeared in the new 52. Since Infinite Crisis, his name has been changed to Shang Tzu, though people also still call him Egg Fu. Still, it's just baffling. Of all the heroes to fight communism, why Wonder Woman? The evolution of Egg Fu has been fascinating, but it's doubtful he's going to be making an appearance on the big screen anytime soon. At least I hope not. And number one, The Wall. Joshua Waldemeyer. This was part of a promotional campaign between Major League Baseball and Marvel. Joshua was working at his job laying bricks when an explosion sent him into the wall. This fused him with the bricks, turning him into a living wall. He proceeds to use these powers to manipulate the outcome of baseball games by literally running onto the field and deflecting balls, running into other players, and mind control, which is another well-known power of walls. Spider-Man goes to stop him, but is at first useless against the wall. But thankfully, the umpire saves the day by sending them both off the field, where they discuss their differences. I guess at this point, Joshua resigns himself to life as a living wall, and is most likely extremely successful career as a private investigator. Seriously, a brick wall. He can get up close and personal. So those were the top 10 villains you've never heard of. Was the title accurate for you? Who's your favorite obscure villain? Share all your thoughts down below. I'm Sasha Wood. Thanks so much for watching Top 10 Nerd. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and turn on that bell notification so you never miss another nerdy list. See you guys.